This is the Adrenal Insufficiency video series. I'm Anna and Vaidya, and this is part two of the video series, where we'll have a general introduction to primary adrenal insufficiency. The primary adrenal insufficiency is a general term that refers to the complete destruction or impairment of the function of both adrenal cortices. And this results in a deficiency of all adrenal, adrenal cortical hormone production. The most common cause of primary adrenal insufficiency is autoimmune adrenalitis, also called Addison's disease. However, there are other causes of primary adrenal insufficiencies, including infiltrative infections, cancers, and surgery. Primary adrenal insufficiency is a serious condition that requires treatment with both glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids. So let's start off with an illustrative case of someone with primary adrenal insufficiency. This is a case of a 30-year-old who experienced fatigue, dizziness, and weight loss that was progressive over several months up to about one year. He is an athlete, and he noticed that while uh, running and playing sports, he got lightheaded and almost passed out on multiple occasions, so uh, a very serious concern for low blood pressure. When asked, he did notice that he had diffuse tanning and darkening of his skin, even though he wasn't trying to tan. He also noticed intense cravings for salt, so intense that he would drink soy sauce or hot sauce to quench these cravings. So these are uh, very marked symptoms. Uh, on exam, his blood pressure was low, 90 over 55 millimeters per mercury, but when he stood up, it dropped even lower, something we call orthostasis. His laboratory tests showed that his sodium in his blood was very low, something we call hyponatremia, and his uh, serum or circulating potassium was high, hyperkalemia. So this is a very prototypical example, a, almost a classical presentation of primary adrenal insufficiency. Not all cases present this way or this classically, but uh, many do. Um, how should this patient be evaluated? So let's review something that we covered in the first part of this video series, which is what is the pathophysiology of primary adrenal insufficiency? As you recall from the first video, uh, primary adrenal insufficiency is due to a impairment or destruction of both adrenal cortices. This results in a deficiency or insufficiency in the production of all adrenal cortical hormones. So specifically the vital hormones, cortisol and aldosterone are substantially reduced or completely um, not produced. Because of the deficiency of cortisol and the lack of negative feedback to the hypothalamus and pituitary, there's an increased production of corticotropin releasing hormone and adrenocorticotropic hormone. However, despite this high ACTH level, the adrenal glands cannot respond to produce more cortisol and aldosterone because they're not working. So the main laboratory findings when you go to diagnose primary adrenal insufficiency is a relatively low cortisol and an appropriately high ACTH level. <clears throat> because aldosterone production is also deficient, Patients can have hyperkalemia, high potassium, which can be dangerous or even fatal. As they drink water, they can develop hyponatremia. And overall, they're hypovolemic. Their circulating blood volume is low and can cause low blood pressure. On physical exam, in addition to low blood pressure, they can have a variety of signs and symptoms that include, but are not limited to, fatigue, lethargy, anorexia, no appetite, low blood pressure, a drop in blood pressure when standing, orthostasis, and intense salt cravings to try to quench um, this low blood pressure, weight loss, diffuse hyperpigmentation and tanning, but particularly in uh, muc mucous membranes like the mouth uh, and around scar tissue, nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and many, many other signs and symptoms that can also occur. If you were to give patients with primary adrenal insufficiency, exogenous ACTH, sometimes also referred to uh, cosentropin, which is to give a huge amount of ACTH to try to stimulate the adrenal glands, there is a suboptimal production in cortisol, okay? Because the adrenal glands are the target of this disorder. <clears throat> so what can cause primary adrenal insufficiency? Uh, the most common cause is autoimmune, but there are many other causes, infiltrative infections, commonly tuberculosis and fungal infections, any bilateral surgery to remove the adrenal glands, bilateral hemorrhage or infiltrative malignancies to injure the adrenal glands can cause primary adrenal insufficiency. 
Congenital adrenal hyperplasia and adrenal leukodystrophy are also two uh, causes of adrenal insufficiency. Um, and there are several medications. They're not all listed here, but certain antifungal medications, heparin and etomidate can cause primary adrenal insufficiency as well. This is a general uh, approach to the treatment of primary adrenal insufficiency. All patients with primary adrenal insufficiency will require supplemented supplemental and physiologic glucocorticoid dosing. Some of these glucocorticoids uh, are ones that include hydrocortisone, prednisone, and prednisolone. Uh, most patients with primary adrenal insufficiency will also require supplemental and physiologic mineralocorticoid dosing, typically fludrocortisone. They'll, they will generally require teaching on dietary sodium intake and hydration on how to maintain water and salt input, particularly on hot and warm days when we sweat. And every patient with any type of adrenal insufficiency should receive instructions on what to do when their body is stressed, when they are ill, and when emergency dosing is needed. And we'll cover all of these uh, in detail in subsequent um, videos in this series. So to review, primary adrenal insufficiency is a general term. It refers to the complete destruction or impairment of the adrenal cortex that causes a deficiency in all adrenal cortical hormones. The most common cause of primary adrenal insufficiency is autoimmune. We call this often Addison's disease, but there are many other causes, infiltrative causes, surgical causes as well. All patients with primary adrenal insufficiency require treatment for the hormones that they're deficient in, mainly glucocorticoids and mineralocorticoids. In subsequent videos, we will specifically get into the details of diagnosis of adrenal insufficiency and increase details on the treatment of adrenal insufficiency. This ends uh, part three of this video series, part two of this video series, and you can now move on to part three of this video series.